In this photo series, we didn't record the photo shoot because the tips would be mostly the same in terms of the model poses and considering lighting and taking photos from the same angle with consistent camera settings. These photos were taken in a rundown old building, which gives it that grungy look that is contrasted with the model holding the sparklers. So in this photo shoot, similar to the earlier ones, we do have some shadows and the direction of the sun changes throughout the day, of course. So we want to take photos of the background and then photos with the model in the photos pretty quickly so the scene is consistent as possible. That makes it a lot easier in post-production in Photoshop. Another reason we want to take photos quickly is because sparklers were used. This is similar to the sand dunes and the smoke photo shoot in that we want to use manual focus so we can take a bunch of photos in a row. So the camera's not trying to autofocus in between. It delays us being able to take those photos quickly. And of course, we want to keep the camera settings the same and the camera position the same between photos in the same pose. For these, the focal distance was 35 millimeter. In the next section, we'll be going into more detail about camera settings, but a 35 millimeter lens is fine for a portrait that is somewhat farther away from the subject and incorporates the background. Normally we want around 85 millimeter or 100 millimeter or even a bit more than that for portraits to avoid bloating and distorting the face if we're up close to them. But we are far enough away for a wider angle lens in this photo series. In one of the tutorials in this section, we'll actually correct some of the lens distortion though, besides doing a color overlay. Uh, the shutter was 1 1 60th of a second. For most lenses and cameras, we want at least 1 60th of a second to avoid handshake cause blur, especially if we're zoomed out far. But with a tripod, we could have it slightly slower. Uh, but anything moving would then blur if it's slower than that. So 1 1 60th is perfect for these lighting conditions. So the aperture that corresponds under these lighting conditions to that shutter speed was f11. And that f-stop, it's a good starting point because it's a mid-range f-stop and provides a good range of focus. We could use a lower number f-stop if we wanted to blur out the background more, but it actually makes sense to have some of the texture there in the background in this photo. That would widen the aperture if we had a lower number, but then we'd need to adjust the shutter speed to make up for this, of course, for proper exposure. Since a lower number f-stop lets in more light, we'll need a faster shutter speed. So I think F11 was an excellent f-stop for these photos. Now ISO was 1600, that's a little bit higher, but that was needed because of the lighting conditions in this building. It's not outside in the middle of the day where we could use ISO 100, for example. So we do run the risk of noise or grain with ISO 1600, but we need that extra sensitivity to light in the digital sensor. And I think these turned out fine. And the mode was manual, of course because the settings are not changed in between the photos. We don't want it automatically changing the shutter speed or aperture and so on. Now in some of these, for example, this one, the aperture is set to F10 instead of F11, just a slightly different aperture, just a slightly wider aperture opening in the lens. And it's a slightly different depth of field, but I don't really think we can really tell the difference. We would want to take in consideration though if it looks lighter than some of the other layers, make sure to take a photo of the background with those same exact settings and pretty close to the same time that we're taking the photos with the model in it because then the background will match better. So we'll learn a couple more Photoshop techniques such as a color overlay and a lens distortion correction. And then in the next section we'll get into photography more in depth and then you'll design your final project. Thanks. All right, in this lesson, we'll work on this project in Building Sparklers, follow along project one. This will be an opportunity to learn a couple of overlay effects. So go ahead and open those up. And as usual, we want to stack these. I'm going to use the Move tool and then double click the background layer so that we can move that to the top there. And then I'm just going to quickly use the Polygonal Lasso tool and just do a selection. So we have the hair there, but then we want just go right along this edge here. I'm going to do this pretty quickly since we've done it a couple times. I don't want to bore you, of course, so we'll just do something like that. We'd want to zoom in with Control or Command plus and minus and really get the edge really exact. So we already know that technique. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Select, Inverse, and Add a Layer Mask. So that part's done. Now to add a couple overlay effects, let's go ahead and select both of these layers and then press Control, Alt, E on the PC, Command, Option, E on the Mac. And now we got a nice 
uh, area on top here. I'm going to press Control J or Command J again to duplicate the layer, just to work on a duplicated layer. And this is a pretty cool technique. Let's say we want to add a little color to this smoke area up here. Add a new layer on the top there. And then with the soft edge brush, definitely needs a soft edge brush in this example. We're going to actually paint a little bit of area up here. So something like this. And it doesn't look good right away. Don't worry about that. Um, I'll show you how to fix that. What we do where it says normal, go ahead and just go to multiply, lighten, overlay. Any of those things will add a little bit of color to that. And if it's too strong, you can adjust the opacity down a little bit. So with this one, let's just say we had a couple colors added in here. I'm just going to color the smoke like so. All right, something like that. And get some blue in there as well. Or if you just wanted it all one color, you could keep painting on there. All right with the effect live. So that's pretty cool. We can actually change the color of that smoke. And how is that working? This is how you do digital makeup. You're just painting with a soft edge brush on the top. You know, normal layer blending mode would look like that. And then you just go down to overlay. Or we could use for this one color. So you're going to have slightly different look to it. And again, if we want to make it not as strong, we can bring that opacity down on the layers panel. So that's another technique to add a little bit of color and stylizing to these levitation photos. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next lesson. All right, in this lesson, we're going to learn a couple of finishing touches as far as if there's any lens distortion as well as adjusting the edge between the model and the background. So go ahead and go to the Building Sparklers, Follow Along Project 2, open those up, and we can go ahead and stack these like normal. I'm going to use the Move tool there, and double-click the background layer, and make sure the layer with her is on the top there. And this one's pretty simple, except see how there's a small area where the stool actually shows through. So if we made a normal selection, like right along this edge, we would still have the stool in there. So in order to fix that, we could use the clone stamp tool and just clone from there over to there. This is a pretty much a completely white background. Uh, you can make a selection with, say, the polygonal lasso tool, something like that. All right, so I'm just gonna do that. And then we could hold Shift and add a little bit more there just so the stool's not in the background there, right? So once we have that, we could fill it with white or we could go to image, adjustments, levels, and just bring the highlights up a bit there, something like that. That's just to show that whenever we have a selection active and we do a lighter or color adjustment, it's going to only affect that area that we have selected. But again, we can use the clone stamp tool and if we Alt click over here and then click and drag in there. So I'm going to zoom out pretty quickly here and just make a quick selection with the polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to click and of course I'd zoom in but we're just going to do this really quickly because we've done this a bunch so we don't want to be redundant. So I'm just going to go like that, select inverse, add layer mask and then there we go. Now with this one Let's go ahead and select both of those and then Alt Control E or Option Command E on the Mac. And so we duplicated it onto a new layer after it was merged. And so we could add any of the effects from earlier, but what if we see a little bit of lens distortion? See how this top line a little bit, it's a little bit bowed out. It's not that big of a deal, but a couple minor finishing touches. We could go to Filter and then Lens Correction and in there are a couple options, and it's doing the geometric distortion fix for us automatically. You can see the before and then the after, or you can go to custom. And in here, we could really, you know, bloat it out like a fisheye lens or go the opposite way. If you ever have chromatic aberration from our lenses, we could adjust that there, but this one's fine. And then also, this is more for architecture photography, but vertical perspective and horizontal perspective, we can adjust there as well. 
But before I do that, I'm going to quickly just make sure this is level. So if you go to the crop tool and then up at the top where it says straighten, I'm just going to click and drag along this area that should be level and it'll slightly rotate it for us there. So I'm going to double click and then I'm going to go to filter lens correction and this geometric distortion is just fixing that lens barrel distortion just slightly. So I'm going to click OK. Notice that I don't apply any lighting or color effects to these layers before I combine them. That's because if we added a lighting or color adjustment before the fact and then we combined it with the other layer, they would not match up, right? So that wouldn't have a seamless edge to it. So any color and lighting adjustments, if we do those before we stack the layers, we need to make sure we do the same exact effect to the other layers as well that it's being stacked with. So that's particularly important in your final project, which we'll go over next, which is doing your own photography and then stacking them, adding any adjustments of lighting and color and so on that you've learned. And then you can add those photos that you've taken and then Photoshopped to your portfolio. Thanks and we'll see you in the next lesson. All right, let's go ahead and navigate to the support files, building sparklers, and then PST examples. These are just more PST examples for educational purposes, just for inspiration to show you some of the different photos that Christine took. And then she Photoshopped these as well, just to show more examples. So we can shift click and see the before and after. So she did a real good job there with the edge uh, for the before and after for this levitation series. And then just different ways of holding the sparklers in this rundown building provides for a different composition, right? Of course, posing differently um, changes it as well, but just holding the sparklers slightly different makes it a different photo. So check those out. Just some more layered examples for you to learn from in this course. So next up, you'll be creating your own digital art using your own photography. Instead of using the support files, you'll be doing a photography series and then photoshopping those using what you've learned in this course so far. Thanks and we'll see you in the next lesson.